It's CardCast with Mike and Lens, the show about everything sports cards, autographs, and memorabilia. I'm Len Plus Z, and this is the Mail Day Opening Video Edition. Mail Day. Uh, yeah, so actually it's a, this is going to be a combination of a lot of things. So here's where I get a chance to uh, do a little bit of a eBay commercial, things that I have up online right now. Um, but actually before we get into that, uh, you know, so lots of times I buy collections and, you know, you kind of do like the whole one price takes it all kind of a thing. Um, if I'm forced to pick and there's autographs involved, I will leave, um, anything that I think is bad, you know, behind, I just won't put an offer on it. I don't want it. I don't want to deal with it. But in a lot of cases you are, you know, you're taking everything. So in this particular case where we have a Ken Griffey Jr., which looks like a vintage Ken Griffey Jr. signature, um, it's actually no good. So in years past, you know, 10, 12 years ago when I would set up and do shows, I would sell it off as a fake. I would charge $5, $6, $10, not really thinking the $3, whatever, um, depending on who it is, not thinking where, you know, it could end up or how it could be used. So now that we're all older and, you know, mature and things like that. I mean, I gave myself partial honesty points for disclosing that it's no good. However, you know, if it ends up in the wrong hands, it ends up, you know, it could end up online. It could end up, uh, you know, at a tag sale, Hey, it's only 20 bucks or, or maybe at a, um, you know, a flea market or something like that. So, um, I feel, you know, as again, as I got a little more mature and, you know, I'm older now that I have a, you know, a responsibility to, um, you know, start taking things off the market. I know I'm not going to single-handedly, uh, you know, change anything. Cause I mean, somebody could just order a bunch of these photos and, you know, if you're good with a pen, you know, you can, you can create as many forgeries as you want. However, I do feel a responsibility to start taking these off and then just actually, you know, destroying them so that even, you know, God forbid, like if something happens to me and my wife has to get rid of all my stuff, this could end up back out in the market again. Uh, Emmett Smith, same thing. You know, these came with, um, I don't, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but there's a guy, there was a guy in Connecticut that had a store and, uh, it was in the, it was in the Milford mall and, uh, I think it was called sports Haven. So these came with sports Haven certs and all the top guys that he had, they were coming out of, I think they're coming out of a place in Las Vegas. So, uh, so there's really, I mean, you know, if I can help out in any way, that's great. Create some goodwill that will not end up in somebody's collection where they thought, Hey, maybe this is good. I've had friends, I've had friends in the business tell me, uh, that they had bad stuff on their walls that their parents bought for them for their birthdays when they were kids. And they had no idea it was, it was fake or bad stuff. So, um, anyways, so that's number one. Number two is we'll get this out of the way. We did a, a nice little wax busting video the other day. I'm going to do another one. This, this box, this 96 Lee studio box junk era looks like it was also salvaged, you know, from, or near a fire. I'm um, hoping to have good luck with this box as I did with the other one. Um, and then whatever, you know, if I don't get any cool inserts or anything like that, I am going to also open this. Uh, it's a rip it card. Um, this has been kept unripped since 2006. So 14 years ago, it's a Hideki Matsui numbered out of 99 and there's a card inside. It could be, uh, an authentic 1887 Allen and Ginter original, a one-on-one Dick Perez sketch card, an autographed mini card or, a uh, a mini parallel exclusive mini parallel. So that'll be fun to do. That's a guaranteed hit. So in case if we uh, come up empty with the box, we'll do that at the end. Now, this isn't mail day right here. What we have in front of us, these nice presentation, lower grade 53 Bowman colors, just screaming with color. Um, these are, uh, this was part of a collection that I purchased that is currently up in my eBay store right now. Uh, on Cardcast on eBay. So it's a C A R D K A S T just one word on eBay. And you could click the link below to get to the thing. These are ending today's uh, Halloween. So happy Halloween, everybody. Um, it is 10 31 20, and these will be ending November 4th, uh, in the evening. Uh, I forget which, you know, probably, I don't know, five or six, um, Pacific time. So eight or nine Eastern time. 
and uh, these will be uh, these will be ending. I started all these off with low starting auctions uh, auction numbers. I think they're like nine ninety nine a piece or something like that is what I started them at, uh, and they're off and running and will end on November fourth, two thousand twenty. I just state that the year because I mean this. I'll probably keep the video up because of all the other stuff that I have in here. But we have a nice Yogi Bear fifty three Bowman color, fifty three Bowman Duke Snyder fifty three Bowman color. Whitey Ford, uh, Phil Rizzuto, and um, Billy Martin there. We have a nice 53 tops, Bob Feller, and a 54 tops, Ted Williams. Cool cards. Nice and vintage -y. And then also, we have, and I'll just run through these, we have 57 tops, Willie Mays, a very cool 58 tops advertisement card, a contest card. It would have been awesome in 1958 to win a 17-inch portable TV. I mean, that was like, I mean, <laughs> groundbreaking. We have 1960 Topps Tattoos, Willie Mays and Hank Aaron. We also have uh, an unopened pack that I'll show you later. Some other vintage, nice, uh, familiar names. Stan Musial, Warren Spahn, all Hall of Famers. Nice condition, all disclosed in the, uh, in the, uh, the listings there. And then we also, I did a video just, you know, dedicated to these, but we have a 1960 Flair um, unopened baseball greats pack. And we also have a 1960 Tops unopened tattoos pack. And one thing I forgot in the video before was there is, the pack is, is completely sealed and hasn't been tampered with, as I disclosed with the roller marks in the previous video. I can look inside kind of like the, you know, the, the thing, the, the, you know, the corner here, and I could see that there really isn't, um, you know, cornerware on the cards because there's enough, you know, there's a little bit of enough room in the pack where it's not like the pack and the corners um, got worn. But anyway, so I figured I would just share that too. So um, also in going out on eBay right now on Cardcast. And then in this collection, they also collected some 500 home run guys, some bat cards. So we got, you know, Eddie Murray. These are all pack pulled piece of the game, piece of, you know, piece of the bat game used. Uh, Harmon Killebrew, Mike Schmidt, uh, Frank Robinson, and then not a 500 home run guy, but very, you know, not too many bats were destroyed. I mean, maybe a couple for Hundus Wagner. I mean, that's pretty cool. Game use bat card. We have a dual bat game use bat card from uh, Flair Platinum with Ted Williams and Bill Terry, numbered out of 25. It's pretty neat. Jimmy Fox, Hank Aaron, Willie McCovey, Mel Ott. Eddie Matthews, Ken Griffey, and not, again, not another 500 home run guy, but a legendary guy, Ty Cobb, piece of the bat, not easy to get, numbered out of 50. So um, you might have seen some $3 stickers in the back. Those are just the uh, the plastics that, you know, now that plastics are so valuable now, um, you have to reuse some stuff. So uh, those are not the price points. But anyways, um, so now let's get to the let's get to the mail. This is why we're here. Look at this. We have another. I mean, I just did one with like twenty something packages. We have like another eight. So we're gonna get into this. Let me just. Lots of cool uh, autographs. These. This is all gonna be uh, personal collection stuff or investment stuff. We got this from who's this from? Boris. I don't know who this is. Let's see what Boris looks like. He packed it pretty good. Let's see. Ah, okay. Got nice, good cardboard there that I may reuse for myself. Ooh. Okay. So we have a 1973 tops Dwight Evans rookie. And this will be going into PSA, uh, signed by all three guys. So Alonzo Bumbry, Dwight Evans, who's very underrated, and Charlie Spikes. And, uh, you know, Charlie Spikes is, you have the Charlie Spikes Award. So apparently he was a, uh, a pretty awesome college baseball player. So to have that award named after him is pretty good. So uh, very, very cool. Dwight Evans is his autograph. I think I stated it in the last video because I had a 74 tops. Um, you know, his autograph is is underrated, I think. I don't think he'll ever get in the Hall of Fame, but, you know, he is going to be one of those 
Don Mattingly, I mean, fan favorite guys. Um, I mean, so, all right. So here we go. We have from Ray Lukic, a 1976 top slab, Gary Carter, all-star rookie. I just got one of these in the raw before, and now I have one in a, in a slab holder. I can't have enough of these cards. Those cards are awesome. You got the bat pose. Again, I talked about how those guys shared a rookie card with uh, three other players, or this is a perfect example of sharing a card with a you know a couple of other players. That is their first solo card. I like that a lot. So now we have a package from Thomas Orr. Let's just get this. Of course, I'll be leaving all these guys' feedbacks. Thank you very much for... Everybody here, you know, got this stuff to me very quickly. So, you know, the, the post office is working in Connecticut. Ooh, oh, here we go. Won this on auction. Triple signed. The big red machine on the Phillies. I always love this card because these guys, you know, were dominant in the 1970s together. And here they all ended up on the same team um, with uh, Tony Perez Pete Rose and Joe Morgan all should be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I mean, Tony Perez and Joe Morgan are. And, um, you know, Pete Rose is, you know, we'll see if that ban ever gets lifted for gambling. Shame on you, Pete. But still like the fact that you are the all-time hit king and have to respect that. And I don't have a problem collecting your stuff. Just like I don't have a problem collecting, you know, Barry Bonds or Roger Clemens or – you know, anybody like that. So I know it's different. I know it's different kind of alleged cheating and whatever, but, um, okay. My boy, Kirk Welch. I feel like I, uh, I get stuff from him pretty frequently. Kirk Welch and, uh, Mill Creek and they just have great autograph stuff. They have what I like. So, um, this is pretty cool. So this is what we would call a blank index card. It's marked Roger Clemens, Pawtucket 84, which, um, you know, could be the fact that he signed the front of this uh, back in 1984, which I really like. And when you see this vintage signature, I mean, you do not see Roger Clemens sign like this. I had to, I'm not really an index card collector um, at all, um, but I appreciate the beautiful signature. The fact that there's a really good chance it came from 84. As a matter of fact, my buddy Johan has got a, maybe I'll have him send some more pictures, but, and I could share them with you, but he has a program from 1985 with a Clemens signature in there, Clemens and Mattingly. Um, but the Clemens signature is almost exact and it's like January, 1985. So I saw that I had to have it. I'm like, that is definitely personal collection. I don't think when you talk about just owning an autograph, that's one thing, but when you start getting like really nerdy <laughs> and you're talking about the quality of the autograph, I mean, that is, you know, you're not going to see that again. He says he doesn't sign like that anymore. His signature looks completely different. And, uh, you know, here he is just, you know, 1984. He's, he's not the, you know, the 1985 pitcher yet that he was. And, uh, whew, you know, that's to me, that's really cool. I, I, I enjoy that thoroughly. Um, so thank you, Kirk. KHW on eBay. He's a really good guy. He's been involved, you know, in in person autographs and has been on eBay forever. So, okay. So, did purchase something uh, on open auction from Mr. Rick Probstein over at Probstein123. Um, I, I have a 1975 Topps Robin Yount signed. I had to go for a 1975 Tops George Brett signed with a big Hall of Fame 99 inscription. So the card is good to VG. Gets a little, you know, light and surface wear and corner wear and, you know, moderate to heavy corner wear towards the bottom. I don't see any major creases except like a little bit of surface crease that looked like it was pressed down at some point. Um, I'm okay with that. The signature just explodes off of this card. And, um, and again, not really happy with the trading card. Uh, it is an, it is an authentic, uh, 75 top. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta be careful with that. Um, but 
nonetheless very cool to see if uh move that over and we're getting close to being done here i think i have what one or two more let's see sorry i have some allergies going on so sorry for the the nasaliness uh, let's see this this was like a ups from canada i think i know what this is and hey check out the the, the uh the advertisements in the back there we got uh See, we got we got the Mick back, and we got Whitey Ford, you know, uh, with their Life Boy, <laughs> which I I, I kind of chuckle at because Life Boy is featured in uh, Christmas Story. Uh, if you haven't seen Christmas Story, you do not have a television, and you probably don't have TNT. Um, and you know, we have Whitey Ford, which he's uh, was he post serial, so uh, very cool ads. I like them. I like having them as a little bit of a, a backdrop or display, good conversation pieces. And okay. Anything to enjoy. So we have, I gotta see who this is from. Sorry. All right. We don't have the name on here. Um, Anyways, I was happy the guy worked with me a little bit on price. Vintage baseball, okay. Um, he worked with me on price. However, it's it comes from Canada, so from Ontario, which I didn't realize. So he charged twenty dollars shipping, and I'm like twenty dollars shipping. It's like for one card, that's crazy. It is coming from Canada. It came UPS. I'm sure there was probably insurance. I spent over two hundred dollars on this card, and. And again, we have another 1973 tops. Yeah, 73 tops. Dwight Evans, Al, um, Al Bumbry, and Charlie Spark, uh, Charlie Spikes. So I wanted to. Um, oh, this guy signed his full name, Leslie Charlie Spikes. That's pretty cool. Um, so these will be going into PSA for encapsulation. I, you know. I paid a lot of money for, for these two cards. Again, they're personal collection. I love stuff that clearly is triple signed or fully filled out. The fact that these are high number rookies. And if you're just looking for regular Dwight Evans rookie cards, you know, just the, the regular 73 tops unsigned, those cards have been going up and up and up. Um, you know, the, the word is out that those cards are just like too cheap. So people are like, oh, what do I invest in? What do, what do I buy? It might be too late to jump on that train. It may not be. I mean, you, you know, you're going to have to check and, and fight for it, but, uh, you know, Dwight, Dwight Evans cards are, uh, you know, the, the, the rookie cards are definitely hot. So, um, let's see, I've got one more here. Oh, wow, this came in already too. It's amazing. I think I only have like maybe one more, one or two more cards outstanding. Um, so, let's see. This I also want an open auction. I thought this was really cool because it just it stood out. So and I didn't I didn't pay a lot of money for this, um, but we have a 1987 tops uh, signed. Looks like an older signature of Barry Larkin and Red Sharpie. Um, this will also be owned in a PSA. I, I you know it's funny you start off <laughs> you start off collecting signed cup cards, right? Which is which I've been showing and doing the past. Then it goes off into like Hall of Fame rookie cards. Then it's like speculation fan favorite rookie cards that are triple signed. Then it's like triple signed cards. Then it's Hall of Fame rookie. I mean, at some point, you know, it's it, this is this is what happens when the collector's mind just starts, you know, going off the track. <laughs> so um, you end up just like dabbling in a lot of, a lot of different stuff because there's only so much that you can buy, you know, I mean, you like what you like, but, um, but then you start going down the rabbit hole of just other stuff and you're like, okay, you know, let me, uh, let me, let me, let me play with something else. So uh, I mean, index cards, I mean, I'm, but again, gorgeous Roger Clemens signature. I very happy to have this in my collection. So uh, anyways, that is it. Thank you very much for uh, for hanging out with me this Halloween afternoon or evening, whenever this uh, video posts. And um, you know, keep your eye out for more stuff. Mike and I we're definitely gonna be doing our podcast soon. I keep bringing that up. Um, so that should be coming up 
uh, sometime this week. So keep an eye out for that. Plus all the other videos like the wax uh, busting video. And I'll probably have another mail day coming. PSA, eventually you'll send me stuff at some point whenever they feel like it. So that'll be fun to do an open reveal on that. Um, and have a very safe Halloween and enjoy the rest of your weekend, folks. Thank you very much. A sincere thank you to all the listeners out there. If you like the show, please like, share, and comment below, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you will be notified when all of our new shows are uploaded. Click on the links below to join Mike and Len's Facebook page loaded with sports memorabilia content. Visit Mike's opening day break room to see tons of new products opened up daily that you can participate in. And lastly, visit our eBay store, CardCast, to look for the newest auctions of sports cards and memorabilia uploaded weekly. And we're out.